Morning. It's time to do the chores. Together. It's pretty warm here. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> Kind of liking this climate. I don't know. We have some cold days. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was hearing people on the plane yesterday as we were coming back. Oh my word, their house is standing. Our neighbors are building a house. It just grew while I was gone. Wow. Anyway, we were on the plane and people were like, you know, they call it, don't call it misery for nothing. And I'm like, oh, you guys, I love Missouri. <laughs> I don't, kitties. I don't call it misery. Well, hello, kitties. I, th I think he got attacked somehow at one point. Come here, Charlie. You want to go down? Yes. <laughs> so do we have chickens in here? We do. I don't even know what we have anymore. Uh, we've got five little chickens. Five of our chickens left that I got from a birthday. That's all we oh, got left. Did it rain? Do you want this? Uh, no, I think that. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. How are you? Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Oh, it smells like a barnyard in here. So keep letter means we keep adding more straw to the area where their poop is, and it covers up the smell. Plus, makes some up, good compost. Makes good compost. Yeah, when we pull this out, of here, it's going to be some pretty rich stuff. Well, you're just hanging right around me. Did you miss me? Huh? Did you miss so me? So we got to do something for these Delawares because there's too many of them for this small area. And I understand they've grown. So why don't I just stand here and watch them come out? Hello, beautiful girls. Aren't they gorgeous? They are. I love Delawares. Come on, it's all right. But they need food. Shall we get some scratch for them? You know, Do we, have any we left? don't have a lot of scratch left. Well, That's if we have we any, let's bring up. it out and we'll get some. You guys, you're kind of bottlenecked there, trying to get out, and they're not all going, huh? So we have one rooster, huh? Yeah. I, I, well, that? Jim, that black one's pretty good size. It is. It, it's just it, it's a slow grower in comparison to oh the other ones we got at the same time. Oh my word, it's beautiful. So I don't think the rooster. And it's big. Is... Oh, honey, it's not a little one. No, it's not. It's a normal sized chicken. So where's our rooster? He is <laughs> right there. Yep, he's checking things out. Yep, that's him. We got one rooster for all now all twenty six. Not likely to touch him. <laughs> See how crazy he goes. Be my bud. Hey. Be my bud. Hey. Yeah. You're gonna take care of all these girls, huh? He's gonna do his job. You're gonna take care of all of them? Yeah. Well, I am thrilled that this one chicken is so much, is is a beautiful chicken. Yeah. I right. wanna take a better picture of her. Let me get in close here. She's trying to get out of the way. She says, there's light. She's got these gorgeous, gorgeous markings. Huh. Okay, does anybody know what kind of bird this is? You're seeing it running right here, right? No. Look at it. Okay, but there's a pot. I, I know. I know. Oh my gosh, and what do we do? It's a good thing I didn't get this done sooner than this. We need to know this is what we're dealing with. We'll never get rid of the mold. 
I'm a mess. I'm home and working, see? I'm a mess. So we really do have a river running through our house and we went through a period of depression today. So Jim, show this river. We have a pond right here and we have, it runs down and out. Now, you can see a little bit of run over there by the wall. It's not raining outside right now. The water's abated a bit. And then over here, it's, it's pooling up here before it goes on down e even further. Okay. Th this is normal water running underground as it rains and it goes downhill. It's just it's going downhill under, under our the house. house. So now there's no question in our mind as to why we've had the moldy mildew smell. Oh, not only did we have a sink dumping water down there, we have the hillside running under our house. Now, we're not surprised about this. It's just, it's worse than we thought it it's was. It's worse. So, now number one on the agenda after the floor goes down, is the French drain has got to go in. It cannot be procrastinated any longer. We understand why people have sump pumps in their house. This would be a great thing for a sump pump, but it's not low enough. So this goes like this. So the water just comes in the front of the house and runs out the back of the house. We're gonna take care of that. And in the meantime, it leaves vapors up into the house keeps it wet underneath now we have three separate crawl spaces so uh and, and this area here obviously is not even a crawl space so did they know that there's this concrete here well we've shown that that you know this is a patio that used to be here yep da, 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 da. and they built the kitchen over it now we're sure the water is flowing under the patio because at the other end of the patio is where the laundry room is where we've done all the work and underneath of our vapor barrier it's very wet i can see it under there so yes i went through some depression and i'm like no wonder they wanted us to scrape the house we're not scraping the house well they didn't know it was like this they just knew it was bad oh. if they'd known it was this bad it would have been gone a long time ago yeah that's true so i want to show you what i did to the joists that were closest to the kitchen sink that were really bad. Jim sprayed them all with this really potent demolder fire. You like that word? Moldifier. Uh, it's a word. It's good. And, um, okay, show them. So this is tar that you put on a roof. It rubberizes it. This back here is sprayed on rubber rice. So I've literally taken those two joists and encased them in rubber. <laughs> so they can't mold. And um, the rest of them aren't bad. Uh, we still have to fix the parts where the pipes go through. Where, where they cut the holes too big for the pipes. Yeah. So we're going to be able to do some sistering with smaller pass-throughs and then those boards are going to be firm onto the patio place here so they're going to give a little more support uh, both for just to strengthen the place that was cut that back down so much but also for any balance that may be in there. Plus we're going to have to run, um, I don't know what they call them, but the boards that go Counter. across. And, and that's what the um, plywood is going to set on uh, to hold it at the end. So it's, you know, it's going to be much sturdier when we get done than it is now. And it's going to be, it's going to be a solid floor. And I have to have faith that it will dry out and that by the time we put in the French drain and all of the precautions that we're going to put in, and it's a lot, then that will all be something in the past. Let's face it guys, this house was built in 1940. It has been running water underneath it for how many years? That's over 70 years. 70 years. Uh, I cannot believe it. I almost cried, <laughs> but I didn't. She was depressed. I was very depressed. <laughs> she wanted a solution and she wanted it now. now. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, 
There's no finger snapping going to happen here. This, this is, there's some realities. But what we are doing, I'm not even going to go into it right now, but we do have the solution. We have somebody who will loan us a backhoe and we are going to be taking care of it. And we know that no matter how low we go with the French drain, it's possible that a drenching rain can go deeper than our French drain. So there is going to be some amount of water going under the house, but the deeper we can force it to go, the less effect it can possibly have on the house. In so, fact, we're going to force it to be so deep that it's, it's regular groundwater just like groundwater does. So that's, that's our intention. So I want you to think back to after the Depression and before the war. That's when they built yes. this house. Yes. And they build it in a cozy little area under the trees, just on top of the hill here, but at the bottom of the hill there. So the hill comes down and fills the house with water. Yeah. And, but now we know why we smelled mold. We understand yeah. it. So now we can take care of it. Yeah. But yes, we were shocked. You do not want a river running through your house. But we're, we're proud of what we're doing. We're, we're doing what we know how to do, what we're capable of doing. And for those of you who are concerned about city codes and so forth, we're not in the city, we're in the county. But we're also in Missouri, so there's less codes even there. Uh, so we're totally within the law. Uh, the, the, what has to play here is our intelligence on making certain we do as much as we possibly can to make it safe and sturdy and able to last and that's what we're working and with hard no to mold do. yeah <laughs> and doing it on a budget once again so anybody that wants to donate money feel free <laughs> yeah jump in uh, but it's it we're getting there slowly but surely we i at least and constantly saying we need to be patient with ourselves in our situation and just work it through a little at a time. I know a lot, a lot of folks... <laughs> I literally scrubbed a hole in my arm to get that tar off. <laughs> Look, it's a, a lot of the folks have uh, advised us to take it easy, not take on so much, and you're absolutely right. What we have to take on to make certain that we're surviving and that we're safe and healthy where we are is huge and anything else is really a big deal and we understand that we're trying to run at the pace we can run and labor in the way that we can labor that's truly what we're trying to do and not go beyond our capability right he did put the um, line in for the refrigerator he, the gas line is in. We don't have any gas connected. Gas line's not fully in. I have one more connection to do. Okay. And then I put a valve on there so I can pressure test it and make it certain that there's no leaks that can hold just, the Just so that you know, um, the gas company came and put in the main gas line. We're just extending it to the other areas that we needed it to be. And like you said, he's going to be testing it. We don't have any propane in there right now. And, and There's before no we, we damage, when we fill the propane tank and have the propane company come and uh, get it ready to go, we'll have them do their own test to be sure that it's safe and, and uh, appropriate at that time. But uh, you know, we've we've used the right pieces and parts and the right techniques. We're confident that it's there and. Uh, we're excited to have a gas range instead of an electric range. As soon as we can afford the gas range. As soon range. as we can afford the gas range. In the meantime... We will have, as a secondary source of heat, a propane heater. He put a, a stub up for that and it'll be on the wall. So it'll be on the kitchen side, kitchen dining room side. Um, so we'll have the fireplace. Wood stove wood eventually. Wood stove eventually. But the propane will be our secondary, which will be nice. It's, it's put Plus we have the space, uh, electric space heaters, right. which we use those in enclosed rooms, so they tend to heat up really easy and they're not much. Uh, there's, we haven't had much expense in running those. No, so uh -uh. Our uh, somebody great. says, oh, what is your utility bill? It's $130. Yeah, we're having very good utility I'm fine. bills. I'm <laughs> so, All right. It's what we got. Oh, I'm gonna go clean up now. <laughs> Bye. I have a little more to finish.